This is the new series of collectible Lego minifigures, full of colorful costume characters like this popcorn block. Today, we're gonna start building them a custom Lego city called 23ville, starting with a massive movie theater that actually plays movies. It's the 90th anniversary of Lego wow. this year, so they decided to celebrate by dressing up all the series 23 minifigs into costumes. And I have mixed feelings about it. But this guy is the absolute worst one. He only comes with four pieces, and everyone else is holding cool objects or accessories. This child has nothing. Nothing except the name that you guys came up with, Cornelius. And it's not my fault this time for being corny. Th that's on you. But besides this part only having one purpose, there is really only one house that would be right to build this guy. A movie theater. There's something special about going to the cinema, but it's just not as convenient as a movie from your shelf or streaming service that you can watch from the comfort of your own home, especially when you're not allowed to go outside. That's why this theater will be Cornelius' home. I'm planning on building a big screen, seating, a concession stand, maybe an arcade, and... Nope, no, nope, we don't need that. But trying to fit all this into one building with my limited number of parts will be really hard, and I had no idea where to start for like three days. But finally I realized that I could use my phone as a screen. Yeah, this is dead. This was my original idea when I built a YouTube Jumbotron for our last city. It ended up being way too small for what I needed, but it's the perfect size for a theater screen. I just need to get it charged. This is actually my old phone. I'm using my current one to film, and it has a really terrible battery life. Oh. So the frame we build around it is gonna need space for a charger to fit. I also need access to the home button to turn it on, but not the camera. We do not need the FBI and or Jeff Bezos spying on us. Cause I'm about to do an illegal building technique. See the phone's kind of loose in here. So I use a snot brick to add some padding that really puts strain on the pieces. I'm sure it'll be fine. I switched the border to gray for reasons I'll explain later and added some detail. Don't worry, you can still push the home button. But now we need to build this into a wall. I used some Lego Technic bricks to connect it all sideways, making it a bit more sturdy with the charging port still accessible and spent far too long figuring out the geometry to fill this gap. Extending out the floor, which is the stickiest surface imaginable, it's time to add some seats. We own exactly 15 red chair pieces, perfect for three rows of five, or five rows of three, or 15 rows of one. But if we space them out like this, I can add armrests in between using this inverted slope piece that comes with a built-in cup holder hole. I love it. And does anyone know if you technically get the one on your right or your left or both? I I've never figured that out. Anyways, I added the other two two rows of seats, with each being higher than the last. Just don't put your nasty feet up there. Oh man. But now it's kind of obvious why I didn't want the border to be red. It would all start to blend together. I added a walkway for people to reach their seats and a door leading out to the hallway. Normally theaters have this on both sides of the room, but this is already getting way too big, so I had to get rid of this one. And now people getting up to go to the bathroom are just gonna have to walk in front of everyone. With some more doors and some more floors, this is really starting to take shape. I started building the walls, but they were kind of painful, or painless I should say. I had a bunch of these window pieces in tan but not enough panes to fill them, so they just look dumb without them. But that's fine, I'll just make my own windows and set, doing all sorts of fancy details with these arch pieces. For the right wall, I used more arches, more windows, and brought out some gold bricks to make it all snazzy, and definitely not like a prison. I'll explain this awkward gap here in a minute, but because the left wall is directly touching the auditorium, we can't have windows here, or it let in all that awful sunlight. So I made it a lot more plain than the others, and built this pair of retro 3D glasses to attach here instead. I actually still have my LEGO Atlantis 3D glasses from a 2010 Lego magazine. They've kind of seen better days, but I look fabulous in them. And you could give temples to this pair to wear them as well. Now it looks like the movie is coming right towards me. <laughs> and I totally forgot about the charging port, but after rebuilding all of this, now it's accessible. We've got a door that doesn't really open properly. I'm sure it'll be fine. And I spent way too long trying to figure out a good awning design here, and ended up not using it at all. Instead, we can build this white sign using questionable building techniques to make this part upside down. Okay, gotta make sure this is still covered. But I got some star-shaped pieces from my star-shaped bin to decorate the edges, and printed out a classic now showing sign to let the city know this theater is currently playing the Lego movie. Don't know about you, but this is still unironically one of my favorite movies of all time. It's, it's just so good. But for Halloween, the theater can play horror movies that are age-restricted. Cornelius found that out the hard way. For Christmas, it can play Christmas movies to get into the festive spirit, and sometimes it combines the genres of Christmas and horror and just plays Elf on the Shelf. That is the creepiest movie. But anyways, I finished up 
at the walls, that gap is annoying, but it allows us to open everything up with hinge pieces and access the interior, which needs some more. I covered up the ugly back side of the front wall and used pretty much all my remaining tan bricks to finish the interior walls. This one is removable, so you can see the auditorium and I guess the back of the concession stand we'll be building. Can't really see the front anymore. Mistakes were made, but we can just build it separately for now. I added a countertop with barriers to keep Cornelius securely inside, and behind this sneeze guard, I used different tiles for the ludicrously overpriced candy, and some stale chocolate bars on top. There's been a turkey shortage, so we won't be serving full-on meals like some theaters do, but the soft pretzel rack works better anyways because I have the perfect sign for it. For the slushy machine, I borrowed a design from Sacred Bricks using stud shooters to make it actually functional. This is the only practical use for this piece. We've got a stack of empty cups, a full cup ready to serve, and now it's time to build Cornelius' costume inspiration, a popcorn machine. I considered being lazy and just using this stickered piece from an old Unikitty set, but I don't like all the white nope. here, so I tried building my own. This is compact as I could get it, and it still doesn't really fit. We don't want Cornelius feeling more in prison than he actually is. So I ended up taking the sticker off the white piece and putting it on this red one instead. I think it's the best of both worlds. These printed bricks I ordered from Lithuania didn't arrive in time, so I horribly defaced some other pieces for popcorn cartons until then. And finally, a spigot on the wall where you can pump your popcorn just full of fake butter. This is making me hungry. But now it's all done and ready to painstakingly move over to the final build. You can't really see it anymore, but I'm glad it's down there. I tiled off all the walls to add the removable roof on top of. We're doing dark red shingles. I try to make them all fancy like, but it'll just be around the border. Most of the roof will be flat, so we have room to build the big centerpiece, a giant popcorn statue. That turned out a bit too chonky, so yeah, that's better. We can fill it with a big lump of popcorn, and now Cornelius has a big brother that we can surround with these spotlights to illuminate it at night. I really wanted to add an arcade with games like this claw machine, but we are completely out of space, pieces, and time. So you're just gonna have to imagine this back door leads to a proof of concept arcade. But before we add the now 100% completed movie theater to our brand new Lego city, let's grab some popcorn and watch the premiere of its first film. Cornelius was an awkward kid from a nearby city who had just asked a girl named Susie Jenkins out to the movies. Except she requested that they see a horror movie that they were way too young to get into. So he devised a genius plan. Hello, um, two tickets for... <laughs> I mean, one ticket for werewolf, please. You think he bought it? Surprisingly, the bouncer did, so Cornelius bought Susie some candy, and they tried to win one of the toys in the Proof of Concept arcade. But I think the claw machine's rigged. Anyways, they got into the theater just in time for the good trailers. Halfway through, Cornelius tried to play a smooth one. Hey, you wanna count shoulders? Yeah. One, two, three, four. Oh. Ew, what is on your back? But she just started screaming, and the bouncer caught them. Susie blamed everything on Cornelius, and she got off <laughs> scot-free back to their hometown. But he wasn't so lucky. He was forced to work concessions, wearing this terrible costume, locked in this prison with bars on the windows and a door that doesn't quite open properly. Until the day his punishment is paid and he can go back home. But for now, this is his home. So anyways, there's absolutely no room for this thing in our current Lego city, 22ville, so... Clear the table off to start 23ville. The only thing left now is Chip and Dale's house, ironically, but this city is gonna have a slightly different layout. I moved all this stuff over here and rotated the whole table so we have a little more space and got a few more white base plates for some of the more festive figures coming up. The theater can go right here in the new downtown area and we'll be building houses like this for all 11 other figures in future episodes. Subscribe so you don't miss them, but for now, have a corn-tastic day.